Okay, Michael, we're live. All right, I'm so excited. Oh my goodness, <laughs> for 23 years, we woke up with you on breakfast television. Uh, maybe a little less known fact that you were <laughs> on the Argonauts dance team. Right. Yes, I was. I was a cheerleader, a sunshine girl. That's what they called us because we worked for the Toronto Sun. And uh, yeah, I did that for three years and loved every second of it. That, that's amazing. That's amazing. Then you went on to radio. Right. And so so so, you know, as we go back, so we, we go from back to front, you, you were with uh, breakfast television and woke us up every morning and, and you were with the Argos and, and, and then you went to radio and then we couldn't see your face. So <laughs> so we had to bring your radiant smile back. And so uh, you went now to global morning, uh, global news morning. And, and not only that, you, you had all these radio fans that you had gained. So you're like, you couldn't depart from them. And so now you're back on radio too. So you're doing television and radio on Talk 640. Oh my goodness. I cannot believe how many things I've done in one life lifetime, but I actually started in radio at a radio station called Key 590 on your AM dial, and I was, the, and I drove around a car and stopped at different locations in the GTA, and then I'd make an announcement as to where I was, and I, I did that with another Argonaut Sunshine Girl, Diane and Shipley. So uh, we've been together for quite a long time, and we would announce where we were, and the first five people to get to us would get a cash envelope, one of five cash envelopes, and then everybody else got to enter for the draw for the car that we were driving. And then I also worked at CTV at a show called Lifetime with Peter Feniak, and I don't know if you remember that, and Liz Grogan, and then Ray Hall did it. So I was at CTV in Scarborough for a while. So that was a placement for me, and it was pretty cool because really it was kind of my first job in television because I was also volunteering at Much Music at the same time on weekends where I really loved and I wanted to be and I wanted to be a VJ but Moses Neimer saw something different in me and said you know you need to wake people up in the morning I see you in morning television so he really sort of changed my whole entire life and uh, I never looked back and then yes I did a W Bachelor Canada after show and now I'm doing something new on W and it's called movie date W movie date and now that we are in quarantine everybody's staying at home um, it, you can't bring a crew into my house so it's on Saturday nights, some Saturday nights not all Saturday nights I'll bring a guest into my home and we'll watch uh, a Hallmark movie together and maybe make something in my kitchen, have a good conversation. But it is continuing with my daughter for the next few months because obviously I can do this with my daughter, but I've had some great opportunities. Loved Q107, loved, and you know, uh, I'm a rock and roller and I've been I was listening to Q since I was 10 years old. So stayed in the chorus family. And you're right now on Global News Morning and doing a bunch of other stuff, the parenting show. And now I'm here with you. Did I say that all in one breath? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I want to say even given all of that, the most apt description, right, of who you are in Valentine, right? Because all... That's, that's why I married him. Yes. <laughs> That we all love you. You bring such wonderful energy. And so uh, to everyone who's joined us on Facebook, we just want to say a, a, a big thank you and, and welcome. And, and Jennifer, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, it's a question. And, and, you know, besides that, Michael, I'm really not doing anything anyway. I have no plans. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, well um, do it. Doing nothing, we find, is actually a pretty big task we, we found over the last little while. So, so what is the new normal like in the Valentine household? Well, you know, the kids are here all the time, and you know what that's like because your three beautiful daughters are in the house all, at all times now as well. So really just sort of spending time as a family uh, while we're home. And we could have a game night. The kids are writing music when they were 11 and 12. 12 and uh, now they're sort of separated my son plays guitar in the basement and my daughter plays her piano upstairs but now together again they've been you know performing together 
together. I've been going downstairs into Jackson's studio. We've been doing a little singing, but really just family time, having dinners together, because you know what it's like to have teenagers and them to never be around sometimes at dinner because they're out with their friends. So now we're all together at dinner time. But, you know, it is a new world and um, we're all being very careful and staying home. Mm, it's very smart. Very smart. Thank you for doing that, too. And we should. Yeah. That hashtag stay home. That that idea, we should make sure we continue to promote that and, and present that. And we thank uh, all of our fellow citizens for obliging and being great team members. Right. And, and doing the right thing and staying at home and and well real salute to those um fr frontline workers who are diligently trying to support us uh in these challenging times and and uh i um i want to know though uh do you do you have any firsts like that because this this is sort of change life so drastically are, have you have you have any valentine do you have any valentine first during this period um, you know, I think that right now, and not that I haven't done it in the past, and I've always kind of promoted to live in the moment, mm -hmm. but I think we're actually doing it. Yeah. You know, we're, we are living in the moment. And really, that's all we can do. We only have right now. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and we're praying. Mm -hmm. uh, and not that I haven't prayed before, but I think I'm praying a lot more now than I ever have before. Like sometimes we forget to pray. And um, I think that's what, you know, we've all probably been doing during this time and, um, and really trying to be grateful. So these aren't things that I, that I, do we do it enough? You know, are we grateful enough? And it's really hard, hard to be positive and grateful during this time. I've, I've found that I'm tr trying to be positive or find those happy moments because Success is to be happy, and right now it's hard for us to be happy, but we can find those happy moments or little things that make us smile to get us through the day. All right. Here's a, here's a shot of happy moment. Uh, would you just kind of look directly at the screen and give a message to those frontline workers who are out there making the sacrifice? You are heroes, and we love you and appreciate everything that you are doing. Um, it is unbelievable. Unbelievable, and I think that they are also living in the moment. And I really just want them to take care of themselves too, because very long, long hours. And I have friends that are frontline workers, and I know that they are working long hours. And I really want you to take care of yourself too. Somehow, some way, take your vitamins, get some sleep, and 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 remember that that is, is really important because we have to take care of ourselves and be strong enough before we can take care of other people. And I, I just think anybody who's going to work right now is a hero. That's you know, um, police officers, firefighters, uh, paramedics, um, uh, people working at the grocery store, people working at Shoppers Drug Mart, people still making food for people for takeout. You know, like there are still people that are going out every day and going to work because it's essential. Um, I, I love that you celebrate these people, not just at this time, but you've always done it. It's what you've done. It, it, you've gone and highlighted their roles and, and you build people up and magnify them. And so we're so proud of that. And, and at the Pinball Foundation- And you, and you do that too. <laughs> well, takes one to know one. How about that? Yes, okay. <laughs> so so um, you, you've done such a, um, a wonderful job at really highlighting. And we want to thank you at the Pinball Foundation as well, because you've uh, you've done so much uh, for us as well. This uh, speaker series, The New Normal, uh, is uh, one of our new uh, opportunities really just to make people Get, get together is, is one way of coming together. Uh, another thing is uh, positive messages. And, and a, a, another part of it really is being honest with where you are. As you say, it, it's hard to feel good today, right? It's, it's challenging. And, and so part of it is just being honest with where you are. And, and uh, when people say, you know, hey, Jennifer Valentine a little bit as well, they, you know, they, I think they can find some, some, some um, solace in that um, in, in some way. And, and uh, so really just want to thank you so much. Uh, I, I want to say this, this, um, this unforgiving um, pandemic has, has compromised families in, in multiple ways uh, right across the globe. And, um, but 
is, is there anything that you'd like to, I mean, because, you know, while it's really challenging, it, it's changed life so drastically. Is there anything you'd like to take with you to the new normal? Oh, definitely. This feeling of mm -hmm. gratitude, you know, and this feeling of love. I think that I, I, I know we're all the same. We're all going through the same emotions. And I think that now more than ever, we've been telling people that we love them. And maybe you don't say that when you hang up from, from a friend. But now we are doing that, you know, because we are, we're just so grateful for family and for friends and um, mm -hmm. and I think I have that love before but I just appreciate it so much more and even on social media and I'm finding that people are very positive now mm -hmm. and saying nice things on so social media yeah there's still <laughs> some nasty things too but, but you know what I mean you know people are being trying to be as positive as they possibly can and sending love i think we are all going to take yeah. that with us um for the rest of our lives we will never yeah. forget this well this well said and uh and uh, as a macho guy i just had jimmy the jet cunningham on the phone before we got on Facebook <laughs> live here and i told you i love you bro yes and uh, so, <laughs> oh so yes yeah, so we it, and, it, we and also oh you know, people find it hard give it always has said it throughout her whole career how important it is to forgive i think more people are feeling forgiveness now for um for than ever that, that, that that's so mm -hmm. what, what's now then the first thing after the new normal sort of kind of comes back uh, what's the first thing you want to do <laughs> the first thing I thought of is I'm going to go get my hair done, get my nails done, <laughs> go do some. Really, I think I just want to see my friends, my family, you know, my sister and my brother and, and, and you know, Oma and my dad's wife and Opa and, and Grandpa and, and everybody in our lives. We want to see them. We want to, we want to hug them. And yes, we see them on the computer screen. We do our Zooms. Look at us. We're doing a Facebook Live right now. But to actually just hug someone and you think, is it ever going to be the same? Are we ever going to shake hands with anybody again? I, I don't think so. But I can't imagine not hugging people. And I just want to hug, hug my family. So I think that's the first thing I'll do. And just, you know, go out and have a coffee with a, with a friend, a tea or some lunch and just see them. Yes, yeah. Nothing like a good hug, is it? Yes, yes. So nothing like a good hug. And I've been told I'm not a good hugger. I'm going to be a better <laughs> hugger in the future. I give. I my hugs are too weak. No more. No more big, huge bear hugs from now on. Something that will change. You'll notice. Well, Michael, my <laughs> so, well, hugs are a team sport because any. Ex be that themselves, right? Good hug. No. Copy. Yes. So mm -hmm. I, I am. As we as we speak to these times, are all experience uh, uh, difficult times. Are are there strategies? You might be able to share with us today of, of you know, how you get through challenges. You know, it's funny that you ask that because, you know, we can all sort of feel sorry for ourselves or be upset about a situation. And then when we're in this situation, our problems don't seem so big, do they? They don't seem like they don't seem like big problems because they aren't. If you've never read that book. Pick it up because you'll learn a lot from that book. And you read so often because our problems get small at times. But if you, you know, you're upset about something, my sister said, you know, take that and put it there for a while. You know, don't think about it now. Don't go to bed upset. Just 
just put it away in a cupboard and then, you know, clear your mind, just clear your mind. And something I don't do is meditate, but maybe I should. I hear it. I hear it does wonderful things. If I have. Well, we, I have. Yes, I have. I should say I have. Yeah. So we used to do it actually when I was in high school in football before the games, oh. right? And so coach who would kind of take us through a whole process. And uh, so, so yes, uh, it's, it's been a few years, but, but uh, a little bit um, since in sport, it, it's been connected to sport. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, somebody else told me something and I think yeah. you say the same thing that you're at you hit the pill I'm talking to him because my interviewing him and he said you know what you should never go to bed angry you should always make up before you, before you your head hits that well you know mother-in-laws right yes yes, yes. <laughs> I had the sweetest mother-in-law in the history of mother-in-laws. When you say that, you know, always people always choose the negative side, right? That whole thought process goes. Uh, but that was something that she told Diane. She always told her, you know, never go to bed angry. And so she she delivered the message to me, and and uh, and I do pretty much anything she says. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're a good man. <laughs> now, Michael, I just want to say, I have every, everybody who's watching to please share this Facebook Live onto your Facebook if you can. But I know people are asking questions, and if we can't get to them, we'll certainly get to them. I can read some to you if, if there are any. I don't even know because I haven't, I haven't actually looked. Yeah. Look, take a look now for you if you can't look. Um, but thanks to everybody who's uh, tuning in tonight. Yeah. There's 79 comments, so there's got to be a question. Oh, wow. uh, so, uh, oh, speaker spotlight says you, you are a great hugger. Oh, they're so glad that she's watching. Yes. Gord says that you are an awesome. a lot of comments, really nice comments. So we will go through these comments and we will um, we will answer them after. So. Thank you. So there's there's a lot so far. That's amazing. So we will get to these, right? So so we should announce at this time. We we really would like to have you ask questions uh, to Jennifer, so she can ask. Uh, call you Jennifer. Do you, do people call you Jennifer? Like <laughs> um, Jennifer Jen. Um, yeah. Should I tell you what my husband calls me? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that's a different show. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, most, I think people most call me uh, Jennifer. Well, Jennifer, yeah. Jennifer, or hey you. All right, very good, very good. <laughs> it, it lasts longer. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's great. So, so we want people. Please. Yeah. So, so we will get to them because I can't see them all, baby. Um, Jennifer Branco is watching our friend Jennifer. We know her very favorite people, so thank you so much. Uh, people are saying Calvin Reynolds is on. Hey, Calvin, how are you? So lots of people saying uh, really nice to answer them after. Um, thanks for making the day uh, with from now on. I'd love for you to direct your questions as much as possible to Jen. I will answer the questions if you have them too, but I love for Jen to, um, during this time, be able to, to uh, ask some questions. And, and so, uh, Jen, how, how, how are you communicating with family right now? Are you, is there a lot of interaction or like, uh, do you do do like video and sort of. Yeah, we, we've, we've been doing the Zoom with family and friends. And of course, um, we've been getting groceries for my dad's wife because, you know, that a lot of people have been doing that for family members, for parents, for grandparents, because they don't want them to leave the house. So they've been yeah. doing it for them. So we've been doing things like that. Um, the only time I really get out of the house is 
because I've been going live on Global News Morning right. from my kitchen every day. Uh, sometimes I rarely but completely keep my distance, but it's usually, it's always something. That if somebody has a story that they want to tell, that is going to the, so um, and, and it's very inspiring. What people people are doing. So not only are some people working, some people are volunteering. Hearing. So, for instance, Warden Woods came of people in Scarborough who got together because the, some of the food banks had closed down. Um, the the food bank, um, the, uh, the Daily Bread Food Bank, has partnered up with uh, the Toronto Public Library, and they're using some of the libraries and library staff who are volunteering to get food to people in need. Uh, but Warden Woods Community Center started a group uh, because they lost their food bank, and they're do people are coming in. They are sorting. They uh, wonderful people in this community doing beautiful things. And, um, you know, I, somebody I interviewed today, Mia Hans, I love her story. She started a Facebook group back on February 11th. And, um, sorry, on I, March 11th. So March 11th, she, she wanted to start a Facebook group and told her friends. Just a Facebook group for people in the Toronto area. If you're in need, let us know. We'll, you know, get your groceries, pick up any medicine you need. And somebody said, well, you know, you're kind of, he said, scaremongering. This was back in March 11th. Nobody really knew mm. what was going to happen at that point. And she said, I'm caremongering. So she started a group called caremongering and you can look that up on mm -hmm. Facebook and not only did it grow here in Toronto like it's it's unbelievable I think they have 24,000 members now since March 11th but it has grown across yeah. Canada and grown across the world so if you look it up and there's not yeah. one in your area start one or join the one in your area and just since March 11th she is mm -hmm. she's changing the world and that's why I love Facebook so much. I know Facebook, you know, they get a lot of bad press, but you know, Facebook has wonderful communities where you can join and be a part of something that can that will change the world. And her face will doing pin. I'm so glad that I know you. I'm so glad that we're friends because you inspire me the time with your foundation and with you and the volunteer with you. It just inspired me to do more into the community. So thank you for you know, inviting me to be a part Well, well um, there's an old, old saying, if what you did yesterday still sounds good to you today, then you haven't done much today, right? So, so it's time to get out there and keep moving, keep going. <laughs> Let's not look back because today we need it more than ever. We right? really do. Yeah. Like what can you you do for your community how can you help out and when you think about somebody like Mita who started that Facebook group and she thought 24,000 people really do want to help I think we all do we have that in our heart especially in a time of crisis during this pandemic I think people really how can I help whether it's helping from your home um, actually if you can and that's what the group said at Warden Woods uh, community center if you feel safe come on out we'll give you a mask we'll make sure that you're safe uh, and help us that's amazing that's truly amazing and again you are building people up and and that that's what you do and so thank you for your messaging thanks for getting that message out there and thanks for being you yes so um i would yeah, Thanks for being I, thank you. you. I, I would love to see if we have some questions because I'd like to get to that because I don't. We want to yeah, know what you want to hear I'm about. Hmm. Okay, pinball from Mark Anthony. What are your strategies for the upcoming season? Okay, my strategy from the uh, the upcoming season is to stay home. Because the only way we can have a season is that we stay home. So, so that's the very ver first thing is, is we just want to do all the things to empower frontline workers, the elderly, to empower those uh, with respiratory uh, diseases. We want to empower them by taking them off the front line, um, really getting this uh, under control so that they can live happy, productive lives and we can all move on. Those who uh, who have this small business and all of those wonderful people out there who are being 
being impacted so severely by this. It's impacting us all, but there are some of us that are taking a little bit uh, more punishment. So, so the very first thing is to stay home. I just want to keep reiterating that because that uh, um, making sure that we get past this is the number one priority. We don't play football without that. And then after that, well, we uh, had a mock draft today. So we have the Canadian draft coming up two weeks from today. It will start at eight o'clock on TSN. And so we do a little commercial there uh, from today. And we'll have, so we had a little mock draft. We went and we had our different coaches choose a team. And so they represented that team. And, and so we went, went through three different times, three different scenarios, trying to to learn and think about the different kind of things that might happen. So we consistently um, get together and we're, uh, we're Zoom sometimes, other times we're, we're just on a phone call, uh, but I'm on the phone more now than I was before because we were in person. Uh, I'm on the phone eight or nine hours a day and I like, you, you're like, you're just as busy as you were before. And, and it turns out that yeah, it really is that way because um, there's a saying, if you take an off season, you'll have one. So, so make sure that we're busy about our work, doing our thing, and, and then contributing uh, to the community as much as possible. So this is one way to give back. Our foundation also has a, a group of young people uh, who we are uh, helping to take, through, uh, we call it going from the margins to mainstream or community to career. So young people who are in a shelter, in foster care, and who are in marginalized communities, we uh, help them with scholarships. So we scholarship them to go uh, to school. It's about 35 young people. We also have an IT program that takes them right into a job and a trades program that takes them directly into a job. But then this process is actually um, young people who are in college or, or, or university. And so we have all of those young people come together on a call twice a week on Wednesday and on a Saturday. And we just kind of hear from them and we uh, have put some things in place to help support them, whether they might need um, support uh, is more around resiliency and helping them get through. It may be a more tangible, like like food. Uh, so we've um, provided food to the shelter that we uh, work with as, as well. Um, young people who are living on their own um, with gift cards to, to make sure that uh, they can get through this period. And it's amazing when we go out and we kind of ask young Young people, hey, you know, where are you? What do you do? What do you need? And they say, no, I'm good for now, right? So we, we would have offered, we wouldn't have known, we would have done it because, you know, we trust them and, and they are proving trustworthy and they're saying, no, I'm good for now. I'm, I'm good. I'll let you know if something, you know, and either way they are, are acknowledging that. So, um, so that's, you know, kind of what our days have have looked like, uh, you know, uh, part of it is the work part and another part is uh, philanthropy. And, and we also get a chance to see each other face to face, which is really good. So so I want to take that with me uh, to the new normal. You do work with youth and, um, you know, you introduced me to Youth Without Shelter. And I'm sure that, you know, I know that this is so hard. Um, staying home for teenagers. This is a time when, you know, a lot of kids are graduating, they're miss missing their prom or kids that, that don't have anywhere to go. They don't have a place to live. So there is a lot of those kids because I know you're doing a lot of work with the kids. Uh, so we have, as I mentioned, uh, 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 sessions twice a week. And with that, mm -hmm. we have a man named Jonathan Hood, who was a foreman our Argonaut, uh, who has his master's in psychology and is, is doing his PhD currently. Um, he works with us on a consistent basis with our young people. And so we've been able to transfer that online. And so he's working with young people he already knows, always has a relate, already has a relationship. So there's trust built there already. And, and uh, with that, we um, 
uh, do a full-fledged resiliency session uh, on the weekend uh, during the week. Um, it's uh, more of a check-in, make sure that everybody's doing good. Uh, we also have uh, uh, some financial literacy things that we do. A gentleman named Paul, who, who also is a volunteer out in the greater community, uh, who works with our foundation. And, and so he's great in that way and kind of talking about things and letting them know what they might have access to. Uh, different things in, in terms of the government. And so uh, if, if you are a young person, we have those things uh, on our website. So you can go and look and we, we can let you know, assess those different things that uh, might be available to you. Uh, as well, we have, have another gentleman, Kevin, um, who uh, is a career counselor who actually helps them to do resumes and he lets them know that there are plenty of jobs out there doing this time, both jobs that at, at home where you're working from home, as well as jobs if, you, if you're well enough you can get, uh, they have uh, those jobs available. And so there's a multi-tiered, uh, you know, effect that we have. And, and then further to that, we have further one-to-one -one, uh, kind of mentoring as, as youth needed in those particular areas, specifically resiliency jobs and things that might deal with financial matters. It's wonderful. So if you can help, please visit the website. I'll look to see if there's there are any more questions? Uh, I know there's tons. Sometimes I can't see all of them until after the Facebook Live is over, so please forgive me. Um, oh, pinball people love you. <laughs> they really do. You are so loved. It's unbelievable. Great memories from uh, the 91 Grey Cups uh, pinball. Jo any John Candy stories? This guy wants anything you can give him. James wants yeah. anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you know, my the, what, the thing I think about when John Candy is the, the very first thing I think about every time is, is how natural and easy he was, right? Many times you see funny people and they try to be funny. They're on all the time, right? He didn't have to try to be funny. He was funny. Right. And so funny just came out of him. It was natural. Right. But he cared about people. So I, 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 I don't think I've ever been around anyone who cared about people as much as he did. When um, he, he would he would never say goodbye. You would actually have to end the conversation or someone that would else would have to pull him away. He was so interested in you, what your plans were. And so when he was around you, you people like where, where he was he cutting jokes all the time. And, uh, well, he jokes happened. He didn't, you know, sort of make jo jokes just happened. Right. He was more interested in you, the person he wanted to know, hey, how can I help you? Like, what do you want to do after football? What, what are your goals? What are the things you like to do? Uh, and Carl Brazley was a guy who had just a wonderful relationship in, uh, with him. And, and um, uh, because he actually wanted to get into the of movies and uh, having him he coming over to his house and John cooked dinner for him and they sat down on the floor together and it, that, that's the kind of guy he was he 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 was that you could imagine everything you wanted him to be he was that and more mm. yeah I, I wish I had met him um, I'll never never forget that day that we found out that he had passed and I sat on my desk and I cried. Uh, and I cried so hard. And somebody came to him. I said, no. I said, but we, we all knew him, right? We all knew him. So, yeah, heart heartbreaking. What a beautiful man. Um, let's see. Just really nice comments, Pinball. Again, people love your smile. Um, we need some gin questions. Bruce says hello. Pardon? We need some gin questions. Yeah. <laughs> they love you. <laughs> well, they see me all the time on my Facebook. They, they, they. Um, Jennifer Brayco, yes. <laughs> what is the most inspirational story you have heard over the past month during this pandemic? So many stories. It's an inspirational story for me, how she started that baseball group. Um, Pinball was the best Argo. Ever pinball and Jennifer Rock, uh, mm. mostly just really, really nice, 
nice comments. I think they know everything about us. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Um, to love the positive vibes. Um, oh, Michael Cle Clemens is amazing. He helped the Parkdale Community Food Bank where I volunteer. That is from Rosemarie Legault. I hope I said that her name well, correctly. I so she wants to thank you for that. I, I think we all thanked her because there are many uh, of our friends and donors who are on. And, and we had a, a little program we used to do called Just Give. And I think last yeah. year we did Just give we raised about a million pounds of food um, for the the different food banks uh, uh, around the Golden Horseshoe and so I uh, maybe just a message uh, to, to all our friends out there we're so grateful for you you make our experience rich we're along we be lived together uh, that's why the harshest form of punishment in our society is solitary confinement because if you're alone long enough, you go crazy. We need each other, whether we want to admit it, admit it or not. And so um, we, we, we're not only grateful for you, we need you. And uh, so so thank you so much for all you do. Thank you for who you are. Thanks for helping us make a difference uh, in the lives of youth, uh, not only here at home, but, but around the world and some of the other things that we do um, globally. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, let me see. Yeah, lots, lots of comments. About because I don't um, know about the uh, parenting show that you have on Talk, Talk Six Forty. So can we? Uh, I, I watch you on Global News Morning, but I, I haven't the, the Talk Six Forty. What what is that? What does it look like? So the parenting show it's on every Sunday night at seven o'clock, and we're continuing it from our homes. My co-host is Pina Crispo. She's incredible. She's just so fun. I love being around her. We both have different experiences right now because she has three little ones. And of course, I have two teenagers, which balances yeah. everything out. And um, we just talk about parenting and fun stuff, too. It doesn't have to necessarily just be about our kids, but we are parents. So we just we every week it's a different topic and it's just plain fun but i love this comment i love this question this is a great question so i want to hear this answer from you though uh where was that did i lose it oh what are your top three movie suggestions to watch during this lockdown i want to know what your favorite movies are what you like to watch on on television what kind, are you watching a series do you watch survivor or, or do you do you um well i um i i we we watched this show called Greenleaf, and so that we, the, the, okay. it was it's a Netflix thing, and it's a whole series, right? And it's, it's okay. um, uh, a, a church family from the south, where you have this um, this family who's you know the the pastor of the church um, is carried on. So not only his son and uh, daughter uh, also were pastors that kind of carried on, and. Um, I, I um, I'm a Christian, and um, and it, it proves uh, that that show proves that the church sanctuary for saints. It's a hospital for sinners, right? So so um, uh, you know a lot of it we you can pull up from growing up, and you know grew up in Florida in the old Baptist church, and and so you know a lot of the the mannerisms, different things that go on are, are relatable in that construct. And, um, and, and then I um, switched over. Last night, I, start, uh, I started watching Ozark, and I figured out it wasn't PG-13. Uh, so, <laughs> so, so, but I... I <laughs> Did you so, continue to watch it? Yeah, well, it, it wasn't it wasn't terrible, right? So, uh, yes. So, so uh, I'm trying to get through this first part, um, you know, uh, because it hasn't gotten good yet. And my my buddy told me that it's really good, and it's not good yet. It's really slow right now. So, uh, so hopefully that'll go through. But but I need suggestions. I'm terrible because I forget movies, right? Like my favorite movies are like Brian's song, right? This is this is a Old song, Brian Piccolo, football player, and and Gail Sayers. Uh, it's a, based on a true story, and um, and he got very sick. I don't know if it was leukemia, but he actually eventually uh, passed. And but it's it's like my favorite, yeah, story. I got to hug it out on. What what what? That's my husband's favorite all time favorite movie. So 
Have you seen Rudy? You have. Rudy is in the top ten, but but Brian. Um, yeah, it's got to so, be right. Yeah, so I, I was a kid when I when I saw it the first time. So you know, big impact, right? So mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to tell you, do not watch Breaking okay, Bad. Okay, do not watch that one. Yes. <laughs> it, well, you know what? Watch the first episode. Okay. I want to know what you think. It's it's actually one of my favorite okay. series of all times. Uh, I, I, Brian Cranston does an, okay. a phenomenal job. But uh, one of my favorite movies of all time, and I know it's so predictable. Everybody likes this movie. Uh, it's Shawshank Redemption. Yes. So if it's on TV, I'm watching. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm Are you? Okay, good. Yeah, in fact, now after this, mm -hmm. I'm going to go watch it if it's on. Um, oh, when did you? Oh, somebody wants to know when you decided to, to, that you wanted to live in Canada. Um, so I, I came to Canada. Um, in July of June or July of 1989. And I was already telling my mom that I might like to live here in August or September. And so it, it, it took me about two or three months to say I could live here in, uh, uh, that was 89. Um, uh, Diane and I were married in 92. Uh, I was already living most of the off season here, but after we got married, I did go back home because I didn't want to just bring her up. And, and, uh, by the time we came up the second year, um, she was, she was favoring Toronto over our hometown as well. Uh, it about three years and more because I didn't want to drag her um, up here and being away from her. So both of our families are, Dunedin is where I grew up, Clearwater. Dunedin where the Blue Jays yeah. are. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, is, is where we were both born in the same hospital uh, in the same year, 11 months and one week exactly apart. <laughs> Yeah, I know that you have a lot of family still there, right? You and Diane, you do have they, family They are there. doing are well, they doing? and, and uh, real uh, you know, exciting report. Um, at sort of uh, about uh, almost a month ago now, my mom had a cancer surgery, and she's already got a uh, report that she's totally clear and free, so the surgery went well. You had to do no um, post-treatment um, in terms of... Um, chemo or radiation, didn't have to do any of that. And she's healthy and great. And so, uh, so, so we are happy in that construct. Uh, there are a lot of people who are struggling though. So we don't, we certainly don't want to make part of that. And our family is, is not immune to that. Um, uh, Diane has both the brother and sister who both need, um, have strokes and both need help sort of, uh, managing the day. So, um, so there's a, there's a little balance there, but, uh, for all intents purposes, we're well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good, good. Um, I just want to thank everybody for all the comments and, um, and some questions, mostly just really nice comments, which is, that's, it's lovely, really. Um, my sister's watching. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So that's nice. Uh, yeah, so just really great comments. And like I said, we'll go through everything. I'll go through everything after after um, we say good night. Just the best. So, Jen, I've, just, I've, uh, yes? I really have gotten, um, I, I'm, I'm, tr I'm going to try to do something new before this is over. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, so I'm going to try to cook for the first time. So, so we got to put, so I, 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 um, I grew up as an only child to a single parent. Right. And so mm -hmm. I, I was separating clothes and washing clothes, um, by myself and folding, even calling, you know, for my mom was, you know, she was, she wanted me to, me to be independent. So even the bills, I was good at math. So she would actually bring the, the 
the uh, uh, the phone bill to me and make sure all the math was right. And then I would actually call and talk to the person if there was a problem with the bill. And and uh, so she, she would do all of these things. But, you know, being a mama's boy, she always cooked for me that she never let me cook. And so um, Di- Diane, so yeah. um, I- I'm going to see if I can cook cook a meal for the first time. I'm, I'm, I'm shooting for this Sunday. So we'll see. You're going to make a mess. <laughs> Do you know what you're going to make? Do you have any... Is it... Are you going to make spaghetti with a can of sauce that you're just going to... Yes. Well, I uh, I worked at McDonald's, so the only thing I've ever done is made eggs and burgers, right? But I've... I've never cooked uh, 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 a, a a dinner meal, so. Uh, uh, well, do do me a favor. Um, get Diane to uh, to take her phone out and do some recording so we can all see it. And please share it on uh, social okay. media, and we'll all yes, share. Yes, um, as long as you don't have to share the food, right? You'll you'll be in good shape. <laughs> well, during this period, you and then we'll come over to your place and we'll all we'll let you know how you do how you're doing okay let's let's get through the first time first <laughs> okay oh good well thank thank you so much for this and uh and we want to thank everyone else and um really really, really want to say in, in anyone uh i'm going to can i stay back yeah yes yeah, so so I, i'm going to stay back yeah. i'm gonna let yeah. jen jen's Early morning, right? That's but I'm right. going to stay back, and uh, so we're gonna we will can um, if they like um, directly. You can go um, say your name because I'm not really good at the computer, so I can't see people. Like you can move around and find people, but I'm not really good at the computer, so I can't do that. So so say your name before you ask the question. If you do stay around, but but please. If you uh, if you like to ask a question, I'm gonna I'm gonna hang around here and and uh, um, uh, for for the next little while and uh, and we're going to say a big thank you to Jen and and uh, I, I know we kind of shake it up round of applause right kind of shake it up. So so Michael, what I want you to do is I want you to because people are going to um, put messages underneath, yes. right? So get somebody to, if you can't see them on your own Facebook, get Diane to look at those messages, to ask you those questions. Okay. And, um, and and I'll try to text them to you too. I'll look, I'll look through okay. some. But yeah, thank you for having me and thank you for doing this. This is such a wonderful idea. And um, I, I love just spending time with you. I can't wait to see you in person again, but this is definitely the next best thing. I'm sending my love to you and your family and lots of love, love to everybody who's watching oh. and um All right. yeah sending my love you know it's and hard to stay positive mm-hmm. but uh let's all just try to be as positive as we possibly right. can and pray and um all right and, and do, do me a favor if you don't mind practice hugging with you. Yes. he's gonna stay on practice hugging with greg and the kids for me okay all right. I will. Off. I'm. I'm gonna go. We're gonna leave you on. All right, Michael. Love, Love you. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. So, is there a way to open this up for questions? Up for questions. I hear I hear something out there. Are people out there? Okay. He knows he's got to read the question. All right. Raven! All right, we're going to do this for a 
couple more minutes. If you hang in, I'm going to try to figure out how to answer questions here. It's not. It's not. It does All right. Okay. I'm. I'm sorry, guys. Um. Uh. Doesn't seem like we can pull this off, but we'll be back on Tuesday. So we'll be back on Tuesday for uh, the new normal, and uh, so I, I look forward to joining you at six o'clock on Tuesday. Um, we're doing this a little bit more often early, and then we'll probably uh, revert back to once a week. Uh, but we want to thank you so much. A, a real, really, really, really to leave you with. Uh, uh, something that I heard during um, uh, the the presentation uh, tonight, uh, uh, Jen mentioned it, and that is forgiveness. Um, this is a good time uh, to forgive. It is a really good time to forgive. I, I um, <clears throat> have at times in an audience before I asked the question, has anybody made a mistake before by a show of hands? And of course, Everybody raises their hands, and and uh, so so the the idea there is we all make mistakes. We are human, and, and not only do I make mistakes, right? I have the right to. I have the right to be wrong, and, and I'm gonna be wrong sometimes. And I and I and I have the right to be that, right? And um, it would be great if if we all sort of just expanded ourselves a little bit and gave people a little bit more space, just a little space to be wrong, right? And uh, in doing so, uh, forgive people during this season. I mentioned that I said I love you to Jimmy to Jet Cunningham. He's a former player that I played with and and uh, he was electrifying. That's why they called him the Jet. And um, I uh, I just want to say as well, it's, it's a time to connect with people and, and Maybe a time where we connect with people where you also have a chance to connect with someone that you might need to say, hey, hey, I'm sorry, or or um, uh, just give that that um, that message of of uh, forgiveness or uh, that that message um, where you you are forgiven and or you apologize or or whatever may be appropriate. So thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Jen was fantastic. Um, uh, she was everything we thought and and more. And uh, I'd like to leave with a quote that I believe uh, describes her. It, it's called the heart of a champion, and it says the heart of a champion is not just about what you've won or what you've done. It's an attitude. It's a way of life. It's how you live stand for is the foundation of your whole life and existence. Indeed, the heart of a champion is not just something you have, it's something you are. Jen, you have the heart of a champion. It is something you are. Thank you so much and good night.